I think as a kid, I just felt really at home in the horror genre. And, you know, as an adult, I really reflected about why that is. And I think it has something to do with the fact that my parents really used fear as a parenting strategy. So they thought that, you know, fear is your friend. And if, if you're afraid, then you won't do things that are stupid and get yourself hurt. So they were always like warning us about the dangers of the world. And I was a bit obsessed with things like fire, being kidnapped. I remember like Clifford Olson was like, you know, he, he kidnapped and murdered children in the Lower Mainland when I was a kid and my parents were always like talking about this and so um, you know when I got the job in it that's what it was like kids were being kidnapped and murdered and it to me that just felt like reality like that's just the world so um, yeah I used to lie at night and like obsess about fire and stuff like that so it wasn't really hard for me to make that leap into you know the imaginative world of the horror genre. It was not hard for me at all to relate to Bridget. I, when I was a teenager, I constantly thought that, you know, there was something wrong with my body. Like I always felt like it was in excess in some places and deficient in other places. And, um, and I also remember feeling like really powerless in my body and, uh, and feeling very critical of the larger culture that I was part of and that I was expected to become an adult and, and be a participating member in. And I really felt that, that perhaps success in a culture that I felt was corrupt would then be, mean that I was corrupt, you know. So I really wanted to resist adulthood in a, in a way that I think Bridget does as well. I think Katie and I, right away, we sort of had this, this connection. We, and we had it actually since childhood, we'd known each other since childhood, we'd, we'd been at the same school where there's five years difference in age, but we'd always been at the same schools in all different parts of the Lower Mainland, we had the same agent. Um, and so it just felt like we'd always had this sort of, I don't know, astrological connection, it was very mystical. Um, but our personalities are quite different in some ways. Um, I remember at the time, like I was into my whole women's studies thing and I, w I was always reading and she was really into like the hip hop subculture and in our own different ways we were really rebels like we were really critical of mainstream culture and in that way we connected but hers was this very like extroverted like big personality kind of kind of take on rebellion and mine was this very inward one and so we, we really like our energies coming together just really worked. I really enjoyed working with um, some of the male actors as well, um, partly because like the guys typically on a set are sort of the main characters, and in this case, you you could feel like like male actors, especially at that age, they kind of have an ego, right? And you sort of felt like this hesitation, like what's going on here? It's not about us; it's about these like two girls, and they were kind of subdued. And whereas normally I could tell they were the kind of people who would be like really out there and like talking nonstop. But when they would be around Katie and I, they were kind of like, hmm, like they wouldn't say too much. And they really sort of sensed that we were the ones that were, that had the power in this situation. So that was really fun. I think, you know, the, it's always the case that when you, when you begin a project, those first few scenes when you're just trying to establish the character are very difficult. And, I sort of wanted to create like an almost like an inauthentic layer around Bridget because she's someone who hasn't found herself yet. She doesn't have this confident identity. And so those first scenes that we that we shot, like you, I couldn't just be sort of natural and relaxed because she isn't that way. She's quite guarded and for her like adolescence is really a performance and trying to find find out who she is. So trying to find that balance for me was being authentic in that character, but at the same time having that that layer, you know, that you know, adolescents have that kind of you know attitude or whatever that's not truly who they are, who you know they're going to become. So um, so it was a struggle for me in those first few days of filming. I actually love uh, doing action sequences and um, really getting to be physical because I think as an actress that's really my weakness is that I'm very um, almost, almost cerebral in my approach to character, character development. Like I'm, 
I think about the psychology of the character, but I don't necessarily think too much about the physical presence of the character, which is really a flaw. And so when I'm doing action sequences, it sort of forces me to become physical. Mimi Rogers was a really fascinating um, actress to work with. She kept um, sort of saying things that were in character when I wasn't expecting it. And it kind of took me off guard. Like, she had sort of developed this idea that the relationship between the mom and the girls was like a little bit abusive, perhaps. So she would kind of like whisper these like random things that were <laughs> kind of negative. Like, and I was like, oh, did she really mean that? Okay, no, she's just in character. But it really worked, like subconsciously, because then when we were in scenes together, we would kind of look at her like, like not knowing, like she was an alien almost, like, who are you? <laughs> I don't know what to expect from you. But it sort of prevented us almost from being comfortable around each other, which wouldn't have been right for the scenes. Like it was right for us to sort of have this distance between us. So I thought she was really clever in doing that. I had actually had some experience previously in prosthetics. Uh, when I was in an episode of The X-Files, I had to have like a full head cast taken and I had to have fake fingers and toes and stuff put on. Um, so, I, but I really enjoy that stuff. I absolutely love it. It's so much fun, like as an actor, to be completely transformed physically uh, when you just look in the mirror and it's a completely different person looking out at you. It's really magical. When I first saw the film, I was like, who is that person? <laughs> I didn't, honestly, I didn't even really recognize myself. Uh, partly because I was wearing a wig <laughs> in it, but it didn't, you know, it wasn't the way I normally dress in my usual life. And sort of seeing the whole film put together, it was really, it was, it was a complete world. And it was so, you know, I think John Fawcett just did a wonderful job in directing and creating this, you know, this world of Bridget and Ginger. So I felt this sort of distance between, you know, the experience of making the film and then the actual product. There's, there's always a distance there, I guess.